Hey guys, I hope you are doing fine. This is Dr. Simran and you are watching Dentistry. If you are new to the channel, please do consider subscribing and click the bell icon so that you get updates whenever I post a new video. So today's topic will be posterior superior alveolar nerve block which is also called as zygomatic block or tuberosity block. So the PSA that is the posterior superior alveolar is the branch of the maxillary division of the trigeminal nerve which is given off just before the maxillary nerve enters the infraorbital foramen. So the posterior superior alveolar nerve block is effective for anesthesia of maxillary third, second and first molars. However, there is an exception to this that is the mesiobuccal root of maxillary first molar. So, in certain cases it is seen that the mesiobuccal root of maxillary first molar is not consistently innervated by this super posterior superior alveolar nerve. And therefore, a second injection mostly supraperiosteal or infiltration is indicated in such cases. Because in these cases, the middle superior alveolar nerve supplies the or innovates the mesiobuccal root of the maxillary first molar. So, a second injection is indicated. So, what are the nerves that get anesthetized? The posterior superior alveolar nerve just before it enters the posterior surface of the maxilla while it is in the infratemporal fossa and its branches. So, what are the areas that get anesthetized? The pulps of the maxillary third, second and first molar and the buccal periodontium and the bone overlying these teeth as well as the buccal mucoperiosteum of this area. So now let's see the anatomical landmarks for the PSA nerve block. So what are the landmarks? The mucobuccal fold and its concavity, the zygomatic process of the maxilla, the infratemporal surface of the maxilla, the coronoid process and the anterior border of the ramus of the mandible and the maxillary tuberosity. So the area of insertion is the height of the mucobuccal fold over the second molar area and the target area is posterior, superior and medial to the posterior surface of the maxilla. So now let's see the procedure. So for the left posterior superior alveolar nerve block, the right handed administrator should sit at 10 o'clock position facing the patient and for a right PSA, the right hand administrator should sit at 8 o'clock position facing the patient. The bevel is always oriented towards the bone. Now partially open the patient's mouth pulling the mandible on the side of the injection and retract the patient's cheek with a finger. So you will retract the cheek and pull the mandible uh, on the side of the injection. This will improve the visibility and reach to the injection site. Now you will move the forefinger over the mucobuccal fold in a posterior direction from a bicuspid area till the zygomatic process of the maxilla is reached. Over here, insert the needle in the height of the mucobuccal fold over the maxillary second molar. So you will insert the needle over here and you will advance the needle slowly in an upward inward and backward direction in one movement. There should not be three different movements but a single movement upward, inward and backward. Upward superiorly at 45 degree angle to the occlusal plane. Inwards medially towards the midline at 45 degree angle to the occlusal plane and backwards posterior at 45 degree angle to the long axis of the second molar. Now slowly advance the needle through the soft tissues and advance the needle to desired depth. There is no bony contact for this block. So in an adult the penetration of the needle to a depth of 16 mm will place the needle tip in immediate vicinity of the foramina through which the nerve enters. And before injecting the solution, aspirate in two planes. That is, first you will aspirate and then rotate the syringe barrel 
in one fourth turn and re-aspire it. If it is negative, slowly inject the solution over 30 to 60 seconds and deposit around 0.9 to 1.8 ml of solution and wait for 3 to 5 minutes before the LA2 start its action. It is very necessary to aspire it in two planes because it is in close vicinity to the pterygoid plexus of veins. So coming to the signs and symptoms, there is no subjective signs and symptoms. Why there is no subjective signs and symptoms? Because the patient has difficulty reaching this region and to determine the extent of the anesthesia. So you will only get to know if there is absence of pain or not when you will do the procedure. So what are the precautions that you should take during this anesthesia? The depth of the needle penetration should be checked because over insertion of the needle that is too deep will increase the risk of hematoma. Now what are the complications? The hematoma formation. Due to the over insertion of the needle that is too far posterior into the pterygoid plexus of veins and in addition there might be a maxillary artery perforation. So this will lead to hematoma and there might as well be a mandibular anesthesia as the mandibular division of the trigeminal nerve is located lateral to the PSA nerve and deposition of LA lateral to the desired location may produce varying degrees of mandibular anesthesia. So this is all about the posterior superior alveolar nerve block which will provide buccal soft tissues and hard tissue anesthesia in the posterior teeth region. For the buccal soft tissue and hard tissue anesthesia of the anterior teeth region, infraorbital nerve block is given which we have discussed in a separate video. So do check that. I hope you are liking our videos and if you do, please show some love by giving it a big thumbs up and do subscribe to the channel for more updates. You can ask us any queries in the comment section down below. Thank you.